Asus filters are expensive that I cannot afford to buy. So I am trying to install the Asus operating system on the cheap Redmi router to see how it goes. The Redmi router has a MediaTek processor. I found this project on GitHub. It is the Asus WRT designed for MediaTek MT7621 processor. I'm going to download the compiled firmware to do the job. We need to log in the router to flash the firmware. To log in the device, we need to start the PPPoE client on the device and uh, open a port by attacking the vulnerability or PPPoE protocol. I have done this job many times in my other videos on my YouTube channel. Here, I'm doing it again. To start the buggy PPPoE client on the router, we need a PPPoE server. Here, I'm using my laptop to run PPPoE Python service script as the server. Of course, need to first download and install the Python 3 runtime and the related service module. Now copy the service script, paste it, and do the modification. I will need the PPPoE to serve on the network adapter EN0 on my laptop. So need to modify here and save the changes. Also, we need to download Netcat and use Netcat to sniff the port or the router once it's open. The port that will be caught by Netcat is unstable. So better use BusyBox to start a new stable telnet session before the unstable one is dropped. Here I'm downloading BusyBox to my laptop as well, and uh, later we'll share it with the router with the, the simple HTTP server function. On the client side, connect the router's one port with one of the LAN ports. Uh, connect the router to the PPPoE server with the other LAN port. This is uh, just the gesture they <laughs> suggest. Now set up the PPPoE server with a static IP address 177. Maybe this address is hard coded in the script. Next, open the router's administration web page. Select the PPPoE protocol and uh, give it a random credential. Now it should be looking for the PPPoE server to get authorized. Just to start the PPPoE server now, wait a few seconds. We receive the request from the router. Next, start the simple HTTP server to share the VisiBox file. The file is in my downloads directory. Hence, we need to run the HTTP server in the downloads directory, all right? OK, finally, it's time to do the exploit job. Copy the exploit script down. Uh, need to modify the network adapter as well, then we are ready to go. Now watch carefully. After the exploit script is triggered, some data will be sent to the router. From the netcat window, we see the port is open. We are now connected to the router. The connection is unstable, so hurry up, download BusyBox from the simple HTTP server, then use BusyBox to start a new stable telnet daemon. I'm not sure if we can find the BusyBox process right now, but anyway, start a new telnet session, then we are in.
Now it's time to install Asus WRT. By default, when installing operating system, we flash the image into the firmware partition. But this device has a different partition table. It doesn't have uh, the firmware partition. Instead, it has two kernels and two file systems. We need to split the Asus WRT image into two parts. Flash the two parts into kernel 1 and uh, root FS0. Here, I'm using db command to save the first 4194304 bytes into kernel 1 image, since that is the actual size of the kernel 1 partition, then save the rest of the data into a file system image. The images are in my downloads directory, which is also the root directory on my simple HTTP server. So we can just simply download the two images to the router with the wget command. Next, use mtd command to flash them in. Before reboot, unlock the bootloader and set kernel 1 as the default boot partition. Save the changes, then reboot. For now, the firmware has been flashed in, so I'm rewriting the configurations of my laptop, such as the IP address. All we need to do now is just wait. If we succeed, then we should get an IP address after the router boots up. Wait and wait. It has been long enough, but we still don't get an IP address. Either the LED is not blue. Um, do you think I am failing this time? But since there is a Wi-Fi network called Asus nearby, I can actually connect to the Asus Wi-Fi network. And uh, seems it is the firmware we just installed. OK, I think maybe the firmware doesn't utilize the Ethernet ports properly. We can only connect via Wi-Fi network. Let's log in. It uh, looks uh, not bad. It is just a simple operating system, doesn't provide too much functions. The Wi-Fi signal seems to be not bad. The user interface is easy to use. We can even enable SSH and log in the device, which is pretty cool. When you install this operating system on your router, Leave your thoughts below, please. Goodbye.